It's a lovely sight. It's a lovely view, isn't it? There's white snow everywhere. You should enjoy this weather as long as you can, since it's not a very common sight these days, even though I'm living up in the north. And here you can see my cattleyas all pile up in a row on my windowsill. So, I better go out now and enjoy the nice weather with my dog for a while and then I can come back to you and make a few winter reportings. So, now then back into my kitchen, the usual place for reportings. And um, as I told you, this is gonna be a winter reporting. Um, somewhat different video, of course. Um, I have to be a little bit more careful. As you, as you can see outside, it's snowing and it's really cold, but it did not stop my cattleyas from growing and growing and growing since the landlord turned on the heat <laughs> in my apartment too much. So they really took off as well as started to grow new growth, strong growth, as well as some nice new roots. So uh, you might as well think that this was, this is in the middle of summer. But I think that the orchids, my kitley orchids think so. <laughs> so look at this one. This is my uh, RTH, the Passion Spring, from my purchase from Swarta in the beginning of August this summer of 2000. 20, the summer of 2020. <laughs> now it's 2021, never to forget that one. It's sitting, sitting in a really small clay pot with only some sphagnum moss. I just ripped it out of its uh, cheap plastic pot that it arrived in and placed it here with some new sphagnum moss around, new, newest growth and its yeah, new roots that were uh, emerging here when I got it. And look here, it's, it's in January. So, and you can see here, this root tip is drying out, it's turned black, so I wouldn't want the same uh, destiny for these guys. So, and as my goal is to place, I don't want, uh, I don't really want to get clay orchids in um, clay pots with uh, sphagnum moss. I would like them, them to be in clay pots with bark, all right? But to avoid a severe setback, I just took it out of its uh, plastic pot and placed it here. And as you can see, its newest growth that it arrived in. I can I can make a link uh, to the uh, unboxing video so you can see this one properly. And well, I think this is this is a nice new growth and it's unifoliate. And the uh, the last one wasn't the previous uh, cane wasn't. And yeah, it's it's okay. This growth is okay for being um, growing during autumn and winter and such. So, well, enough talk. I'm gonna use my tool for this to get it out of its spot. We'll just um, go like this. Bend it a little bit like this to see if I can get it out. Yeah, yeah, I was able to get it out without any uh, destroyed root tips. So, yeah, good thing. And, yeah, look here. I'm gonna... Well, I'm not gonna do anything. As a matter of fact, I would just... upsize the pot a little bit from this size pot to this size pot. Can you see it properly here? Yeah. I also pre-wetted <laughs> to uh, this one to uh, yeah fill the pores in the clay pot with um, with water, yeah, so we can hold a little bit more moisture. Well, but this one is too heavy for it; it's too large. So I'm gonna put that one aside, as well as this one, of course. Uh, well, I can reuse a little bit of this charcoal. I got this um, medium-sized bark 
and this one is not so dry as the usual one that I buy from Swarto. But um, well, I will see what I what I should do here. I'm just gonna place it here in the middle, like this. So well, I would just um, I would get rid of some of the sphagnum moss here, a little bit of it, yes, like this. And well, I will place a few pieces of um, chunky, or oh, one to two centimeter bark in the bottom, like this. I think. Well, no, not so much. Yes, like this. And I will add the a little bit more uh, damp media to it. So, this is good. Just add some bark. Nothing else. Just add a little bit of bark to it. Press a little bit. And I think this is it. For this guy. This time. Next time, I will, I will probably rip it out of this pot and replace this pot with this size pot and replace all of the media with plain bark. But when well, that's the time, this one is going to be adjusted to growing its new roots into pure plain bark. So this was an easy enough repotting. And I can also use its old sticks here. These kinds of sticks you use for your barbecue. But I think they're nice. So, this one is ready. And I also got this orchid. This orchid from my... Um, it's no ID, Ketley, I said. Uh, it's the one that I got for free. And this one is in the film that's called my adopted orchids, my 15 adopted orchids, so or such. I will make a link in the uh, in the description box below. And uh, I wasn't really sure if this one was a Cattleya orchid or if it was something else. But now I think it's a Encyclia orchid, as I told you in my uh, What's in Spike and Bloom video. Yeah, you can see the canes. Don't really look like a Cattleya orchid. This one is a proper, this one is a proper um, encyclia. Look at the canes here. You just see the similarity? Yeah. So, I assume that this one is a encyclia with lots of lovely sheath with stuff in it. Yeah. So, we're going to see some blooms, but I think they're going to take a while. It's going to take a while before uh, they develop properly. They're growing really slowly in here. So, well, maybe in a month or so. It's even forming a new sheath here. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's working on stuff here. It's doing things. But why am I going to touch this one, this lovely orchid? Yeah, this is the reason. It's outgrowing its pot. And the roots will die off here. They're going to die off. And there's also new growth here coming up. As well as this one. It's not going to be able to uh, produce itself properly, as well as its uh, new growth down here at the base. So, yeah, well, but <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, release the, it's sitting in plain bark, you see that, and the roots are looking great, and the pot is not really too large for it, but uh, I will see what happens when I take it out of the pot, and see what the media smells like and such. So I would just press it a little bit like this, and it's been already it's already been sitting in water for a while, two days ago. So it's um would be easy enough to take it out of the pot, yeah. As you can can oh see now see here this media yeah it's um yeah he's really nothing wrong with the media. I'm not gonna fuss too much with it. As you can see, 
this old uh, part of the orchid. <laughs> yeah, it's this one. Because <laughs> this one is a new one. And this one is also producing another new growth. So, well, I would like to have this part of the, or the orchid to the backside and press it a little bit more. But, as this one is also producing another new growth. So, it's producing growth in three directions here. So, I will just uh, get rid of some of the media down there, hmm. without disturbing the other ones here. Yeah, as you can see, there's not any roots down back here. So this is the oldest part, as you can see here. Doesn't have any roots left, viable, such as so. Well, yeah, of course I can use that, but, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean this pot up. Since I'm going to reuse this one. I think it's a nice size on this one. I couldn't find uh, a matching one. Newer pot. That's that's matching this one's qualities. All right. So now I washed it. What to do here? I'm going to take this stick up out here. And place this one down. I would like it to go down even more. So perhaps I have to... Uh, yeah, release some of the media anyways, but it will be all right. I want it to be inside the pot in order for the roots to go down into the media instead of out of the pot. So, yeah, I think this could be it. And, yeah, let's see here. I would like to have some space for this one, as well as this one, as well as that one. So, what to do? Oh, yeah, I can reuse this media. There's nothing wrong with this media. Nothing wrong whatsoever. So. It can stay here until spring or so. When I see new root growth from the newest ones here. That's coming out, out here. The newest growth, newest growth. <laughs> yeah, so. Well, yes. This is okay. Well, I mean, first I thought uh, that I could uh, mix the old media with some new media, but what's the point? I mean, the old, the new media is gonna be old. <laughs> it's gonna be affected by the the old media, so. That's not a good idea. Not at all. But I still got some mending here to do. <laughs> all right, and yeah, a few waterings will do the trick with the air gaps here. This is not a big deal, I think, for this one. So, what am I gonna do now? I would like to see the, um, this cane going a little bit into the middle here, yes, to make room for this growth. Now there's enough room for this growth and there will be enough room for this growth to develop as well as there will be, let's see here. No, there won't be so much room left for this one, but, well, maybe if I just, um... Stick these two together into the middle with the same stick. So, there's a lot of <laughs> mending here to do. A lot of new trick to do. <laughs> yeah, well... And I also would like to see the lovely flowers when they finally arrive, so uh, <laughs> let's not bear with the sheath here. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a tricky one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It can stay in this pot until springtime. Then I will have to uh, repot it into some new media 
as well as the larger part. Perhaps um, a one size up. But at least now it's got room for this one, this one's new grow uh, roots, and this one's new growth as well as roots. As well as this one's new growth here and roots. So, yeah, this is okay. This is a no idea encyclia type orchid. What the blooms look like, time will tell before long. And this one is my lovely Encyclia prismatocarpa. I got this one in the summer of uh, 2018 from Elsner Orchideen in Germany. But, yeah, she's retired now, unfortunately. So the um, orchid nursery is no longer with us, so to speak. But, well, this lovely pl plant, this lovely orchid from her, sure is still with us. And it's been blooming. Um, I think it was October uh, 19. So this year it's skipped this blooming, but you can see it's got a few lovely new growth with sheath in it here. And it's developing yet another sheath in there. So there's going to be blooms before long. But why am I so worried about this one? Why am I going to touch this one at this time of year? Well, I don't really like that it's new growth is on the outside. As well as I reported this guy uh, on the... in March this uh, last year. <laughs> I'm always saying this year, but it's last year, 2020, in March. So I think while it's in growing stage, as you can see here, and the media shouldn't be uh, so broken down yet. So I, as it's sitting in sphagnum moss, perlite, charcoal, bark, coconut fiber, or chips. Well, it's not going to last forever. But I think it could stay. Last time it stayed for two years. And it didn't do this guy any harm. So, and the roots were really nice. So, well, let's get started and see what to do with this guy. Yeah. It was easy enough to get it out of this pot. Yeah, throw it in the sink. <laughs> All right, um, what to do? This is a, already a new growth here. It's a really, really vigorous plant, this one. It's a lovely orchid to, um, to have. But I can get rid of the um, little bit of this. No, there's nothing wrong with this media. It smells great and yeah, and here's the oldest part. I can get rid of a little bit of its uh, sphagnum moss here. But um, as you can see, it's a, it's quite a fair amount of bark already in this one. And but let's see. No, I'm not going to do anything else with this guy. I'm just going to leave it be. And I'm going to place it in this size pot instead of the one I just throw away. This size pot. I think this one is 12 centimeters and this one is 15. Oh, yeah doesn't see but it's a quite large pot isn't it so I will have to add a little bit of this large ugly looking uh, poor quality liquor beans <laughs> I was gonna use these ones for semi hydroponics but yeah 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 for redwood trees perhaps then no so I'm gonna fill this one up well maybe not this higher let's see like this yeah, and see how far down it goes into the pot. Or if I should just skip the lecker beans all together. So, yeah, well, <laughs> no lecker beans <laughs> in the bottom. All right, um, this pot is perfect for it. And the growth is gonna come out if I press it a little bit down without breaking the new growth here. So it's going to have room for this one as well. It's a little bit, um, I would like this one to be a little bit more narrow like this. But how? But yeah, well I just have to press it this time. Yeah, a little bit. Press it down and press it. 
as well as fill it up with the small size bark. So I still want this one to be to sit in to be sitting in, in quite a water at Tempty Media. It's a really thirsty guy. So yeah, I have an idea. Just going on going over it like this. Uh, yes. Ah, the sticks will do the job, the rest of it, later on, I think. Well, what to do now? I need some more bark, media, here. To add where the newest growth are. They're here, so, yeah. The whole purpose of this reporting, to make some room for these guys. Well, I, I think I have to press these guys together. Yeah, I will have to do that. Yeah, to make some more room. Okay, maybe this plant doesn't look as tidy as I would like it to be, but I think it's more important that the newest growths will have some proper room to develop correctly. Now I'm going to add a few large pieces of these ugly lecker beams here to the, to the back side in order not to make it too dry here. Well, watch out for this one. Just see what I'm doing here, so I'm not breaking anything vital. I would like to tease it, so I want to give these guys a little bit more space. That's the purpose of this whole reporting, I might add. So um, I need some more sticks to is this large one to the side with. Oh, right, I think that's going to solve a little problem. Yeah. And down, it has to go down. And like this. Now, now, it's starting to be what I want it to be now. Now it's looking better. Okay, okay, okay. So now I just have to um, get rid of the um, <laughs> a few of these plastic stripes, as I call them. That's yeah, <laughs> they're that's left over the ones that I'm not using. <laughs> I'm just sitting there, a few of them now. So I'm gonna get back to you and show you the real finished result of this little reporting on this guy. So this is what the Encyclia Prismatocopa looks like now when it's reported. Uh, and I placed it in this ridiculous <laughs> pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the last one that was left that had the right size. <laughs> it almost didn't fit it any. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> there's enough room here for the new bros to grow on properly. And as well for this little guy down there. So, well, I'm pleased. And I perhaps I will have to report it this spring again, but later on in six months or so. But before that, I hope I can show you some new blooms. Wouldn't that be great? They're really lovely. Okay, so put that one aside. <laughs> I look at this terrible, terrible reporting. So this is a proof that repartings aren't always that successful. This is my beautiful Oncidium varicosum variation Rogesii, which I got, I think I got it from Rulke at Lund Orchid uh, Show uh, in September 2019. Yeah, and it flowered for me this summer, as you, as you saw, I made a video, I can put a link to the video in the description box below. But uh, I reported this guy since it was outgrowing its pot, I think. And even though it had some new roots, new growth, two of them, as you can see, it did not really matter. I divided it into two pieces later on, but this one aborted its, uh, almost aborted its new growth here. But the pseudobobs here are still plump, so I'm going to let it be. I'll let, I'm going to let this one stay in this pot for a while. But this pot is the best pot, and it almost killed this new growth as well, due to scale. 
uh, as well as it was go as we get a little bit too dry. Uh, perhaps I put it in a little bit too um, hot position, as well as I did not water it enough when it was in growing stage. So I put it at, at a position where it was impossible to reach it for me. It, it took some effort to reach it, and then I got lazy and did, didn't touch it at all. So I just forgot about this guy. But okay, if I spray the roots, they're turning green. So, well, they're still alive. But a few of the older pseudobulbs are <laughs> are getting mushy. And this one is not, but this one. I can just rip it off and get rid of this one. Doesn't serve any purpose to this guy. To the future of this guy. Well, um, I have to cut it off. Let's see here. Just be careful. All right. Well, so I'm going to place this one in into the same media. I put a little bit of uh, rock wool on top, but well, uh, well, I can use that one. It doesn't really matter. But I have somewhere a similar pot that the other division got, so I'm going to use this small division, uh, small pot with the same kind of media. I think, and I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the rock wool. Strange as it seems, but well, I really am. It needs its moisture. I'm just gonna fill it up and see what happens. Well, um, it's, um, it's a pity. I, I really love this orchid, I really love its lovely blooms. I mean, this oscidium uh, type of blooms, it looks just like um, a tolumnia blooms. I mean, I love this. I always love this one, this variety, but it's, I guess it's my own fault, this, so, yeah. Now I have to uh, make it up, make up for it, and make it right again, and give this one a proper chance to uh, recover. So I'm not going to forget to water this guy. As you could see, it's really capable of taking up the moisture. So that's not the problem. I think the problem was me. And next time I repot it, I will just rip it up and leave it be in its media and just uh, yeah, make a quick repotting out of this guy in order not to disturb the roots too much. But, well... I think it's okay. Now the roots are at least buried. As you can see, the old flower spike here. So there's evidence that it really bloomed for me. So, haha, yeah. No. <laughs> but if you look at it today, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing that it even flowered for me in my care. But I got rid of the scale. At least. And now I'm trying out this neem oil. I sprayed this one with neem oil as well as the little one. That's a little division. So, I would try this neem oil solution out. It's okay. It's okay. I can adjust it later on. All right. This was a quick reporting, wasn't it? Oncidium varicosum variation rogesii, the uh, dark brown, almost black colored. Uh, <laughs> I think it's sepals and petals and the lip is striking yellow. I can, I will have to make a pop-up here <laughs> of its gorgeous flowers. So I will show you its progress in, in a while and you should see if this one or its little brother here is doing the, which one is, is doing the best. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, but before we finish for today, uh, I just wanted to show you a non-orchid purchase. My latest acquisition. Yeah, it sure looks like a vanda. But it's not. It's a Olivia Miniara from Hornbush. Um, this one is gonna have um nice orange flowers. So when the guy up there, my Fuchs orange nugget, is fading, I gonna have yet another orange beautiful splash in my kitchen for a while. And this one. It uh, produces its uh, new growth from the base, of course. Um, not of course, but it does. And 
Well, it only, it only flowers once from the middle here. So you can divide this one and it can send out quite many in numbers. New pseudobulbs or new plants, if you prefer that, from the base. So you can divide it and yeah, give away a couple of those to friends and yeah, I, I just love this plant. I don't know what I got, didn't get it before, but it's a really old plant. I mean, an old variety, so it's been out there for ages. Yeah. All right, I just wanted to show it to you. So that was all, folks, for today, I think. Now I'm gonna go out in the darkness. You see, it's already dark outside. I mean, I've been making this video for about an hour since I first uh, started to recording. And you saw the beautiful sunshine, well, not sunshine perhaps, but the beautiful weather outside with all the beautiful white snow. And now it's dark. <laughs> so you really have to be fast this time of year if you want to see some daylight. But I love the four seasons. I really do love to be living here in this country. Up north. All right. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And, well, hope to see you soon. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>